Welcome to the next exciting Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth, and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is President of Roots Magic and its author. And today's topic is lists and reports in Roots Magic. And it doesn't take long to discover and use the most common charts in genealogy, pedigree charts, and family group sheets. But Roots Magic offers over 100 different charts, lists, and reports to help you visualize and share your family history. And you'd be surprised at all the different things you can learn about your family history once you learn to harness these unappreciated heroes. So for the next 90 minutes or so, we're going to get a little more familiar with them. Okay, so before we get started, I'm seeing a couple of comments uh, that the presentation is not showing full screen. Is that, is that still the case? Um, or, or is it now full screen now that my screen is up? Okay. Okay, everybody says it's okay now. Okay, so uh, welcome to, welcome to our, our webinar on reports. Um, what we've discovered as we, uh, as we look at support and things like that is a lot of people don't realize how many reports there are in Roots Magic. Uh, you know, they'll, um, they'll say, oh, I, I wish there was a way to, you know, get my data out like this, and they don't realize that there actually are a lot of these reports uh, that are available to do that. Now, one of the reports we talked about a week or so ago in a, um, in a webinar called Creating a Custom Report. So what we're going to be showing you today, though, are the reports that are built into Roots Magic that you can just go in and select a few options and be able to generate a report right then and there. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is when I'm ready to print a report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the little report button on the toolbar. And when I do that, Roots Magic brings up the report dialogs where I can select the type of report that I want to uh, print. Now there is another way to come into here and that is to come up to the reports menu. When I click on the reports menu, it breaks it out into those same categories that you see on the main report uh, screen. So if I come up here and click print a report, it's going to bring that exact same screen up that, has, that clicking on the little printer button would do. Uh, but then we would be able to see a few um, of the more commonly used reports. But for what we're going to do today, I am going to go in by clicking on the little printer button so that we can look at all of the reports. Now, when I'm generating the reports, by default, it's going to come up with all reports selected. And so as I scroll through here, it's going to give me all the reports. Now, you can also go in and break these into categories. And so to cover the categories a little bit, if I click on charts, it's going to list the reports that are considered charts. And charts tend to be uh, reports that have lines connecting people together uh, to show kind of family line kind of information. The next category is going to be forms. And forms is going to give me things that tend to be on a page printing up a calendar, a family group sheet, an individual summary, or a scrapbook. And we're going to come back to all of these and, and give examples of what each of these are. Labels, pretty straightforward, that prints address labels. Lists is the category that has the most reports in it. And we'll go, we're actually going to go over each of, what, each of these as well today. Uh, but these are different kinds of lists of information, whether it's lists of people, lists of sources, lists of whatever. Uh, it's just lists of your data. Narratives. Narratives is when it, you print books, where the program is going to write sentences for each fact that you've added in a person's life. We'll spend a little time on this, but we did have a, a webinar called Publishing Your Family History with Roots Magic, where we talked a lot about the narratives. So we probably won't spend as much time on that one particular report as we will on some of the others. In the reports category, we have two items. Blank reports, that's where you can print your blank pedigree charts, your blank group sheets, and things like that. 
and then custom reports, which we covered a couple of weeks ago in a webinar, and we went into all the details. So that one we won't really talk about a lot. The final category is wall charts, and these are going to be the charts that print on multiple pages uh, in the large, large uh, charts, that, or they can get very large, uh, and you can print those out either so that they appear on multiple pieces of paper that you tape together, or you can send them to a print service to print those. And we're going to have an upcoming webinar dedicated just to wall charts, so we probably won't spend a lot of time on these particular charts. So one last thing on this particular screen. When I go into these, by, by default, you can see that when I'm selecting a category, that over here on the right, it's giving you a little example of what that chart or that report will look like. Uh, if you don't like pictures, you can go to the list mode, in which case all of those reports will display as a list. It will also give you a description, a brief like one-line description of what that report does. Uh, and as you go through there, through the filters, you'll see the different things. But that does give you the description of that. Now, when you're on the icons version, if you click, if I, if I highlight charts, for example, and look at the charts category, if I click on pedigree chart, I will see right down here, there's that description. So I can see that description from this particular view with the little icons. Uh, it's just that I don't see them all in a list all at once. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and just start right here from the top. Let's go ahead and start with charts. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with the box chart, since that's the first chart we have. And I am going to select that chart and then say Create Report. When I click Create Report, Roots Magic will bring up a screen with the options for that particular report. So in this case, we're talking about box charts. So these are going to be the options for the box chart. Okay, this area right here is going to be the options that are available for this specific chart. Over here on the right, you're going to see a list of buttons. And these buttons may be a different batch of buttons depending on which report you're doing. But these are the buttons that give you kind of an overall uh, view or overall uh, settings for the report. And so these are going to be shared among a bunch of different reports. Uh, and so, and so we, let's talk about those first. Let's talk about these particular items first. Uh, because they will, they will be in effect for pretty much every report. Okay, we will have one here called Title. When I click on Title, Roots Magic asks me to enter the title that is going to be on this particular report. Now, in this case, you can see that it says Ancestors of and has Person in square brackets. What that means is that that title is not going to say Ancestors of John Smith every time. It's going to say Ancestors of whoever the person that you're doing this chart for. And you can see that right up here. And so that person is going to be replaced with the name of the person. Now, there are actually a few different fields that you can use. And if you click on the little green arrow, uh, you can see that. In this case, it's just the person's name. But you may have a field for the couple's name. So if it's a report for uh, a marriage list, for example, you may have couple as the field you can use. Now, if you ever go in and change it and mangle it up, you're always going to have a reset button that will reset it back to the default. So feel free to kind of play with a lot of these options to get exactly what you want, knowing that you can always click one of these reset buttons to get everything back to where it was. Now, you'll notice there's actually a reset button right on the top here. That actually is going to reset all of these options as well. So if you go in and change the options for your report, you can always go in and click that reset in case you get those settings to uh, generate a report that looks horrible. You can always say reset, and it'll take it right back to the default. OK, the next button down, layout. The layout has two different parts. The first part is the page layout. This is where you can choose what paper size you're going to use. So if you're here in the U.S., you can use letter. That's 8.5 by 11. But if you happen to be uh, in, in the U.K. Or, or in another country, you can choose uh, the standard uh, metric system sized pages as well. You can also choose legal. Uh, so you choose what paper size you want, 
You can also choose custom. So if you have a paper size that's kind of off, uh, you know, off the standard uh, list of uh, paper sizes, you can choose custom, and that will enable those two fields. So you can actually enter a specific width or height uh, for this particular report that you're going to generate. Okay. You also can set your margins. So you can choose what's how much white margin you want at the top and at the bottom, at the left and the right. You can also choose how much space to allocate to the header and footer. Okay. Now the header and the footer, you define those in the same place. Those will be on a separate tab. But before we go there, let's look at one last item, portrait or landscape. Portrait means print the, the report on the paper like you normally would, the, with the height being the tallest uh, dimension. But I can choose landscape to have it print basically sideways on the paper. That can be useful for certain lists that may have uh, wider, wider fields than you might normally want. Like if you're going to have uh, a list that's going to have places and you don't happen to want that place to kind of word wrap within the column, you want it to actually squeeze more on there, you might want to go to the landscape mode. So that's up to you how you choose that. This other tab is the header and the footer. And this lets you choose what you want to print at the top of each page and at the bottom of each page. So when I click on this header, I can choose first whether I want a header at all. If I choose to print a header, it's going to print whatever I tell it to with a line underneath it, and then the report will start underneath that. If I choose footer, same type of thing, I can choose, if I choose to print a footer, it will print a line underneath the body of that report on the bottom of each page, and then print the page number or whatever I'm putting in that page uh, right there uh, uh, underneath that as well. Okay, each of these sections, it works exactly the same. So whatever I'm going to tell you about right here in the header works exactly the same with the footer. You have mirror header on even pages. What that does is if you made your left margin and your right margin different, it's going to swap that back and forth so that that outside margin, if you print on the front and back of pages, so that that outside margin is always the same. Um, in, in other words, if you have a left margin of a half inch and a right margin of one inch, you don't want the outside margin of the even pages to be a half inch and the odd pages to be one inch. You don't want it looking like that. So that's what that option's for. That's useful if you're if you're printing double-sided. Okay, you can then choose what you want in the left, the center, and the right section of the header. And you don't have to put stuff in every section. So for example, by default, the left section of the header is going to have the title. And there's your little field. And again, you can click on the little arrow to, to see. You can put the title the date, the page number, the total pages, or the file name, the Roots Magic file name, uh, as part of that header or the footer. You can choose what font, what, whether you want bold, italics, underlining, and so on, and it's going to give you an example here. So by default, Roots Magic on the left half of the header is going to put the title of the report. The center section is going to have nothing, and the right section is going to have the date. Now you'll notice it's going to print the date in 10-point font, but it prints that title in 16-point font. So that title is going to be a bit bigger than the date over on the right. In the footer, nothing on the left, nothing on the right, and on the center, it prints the page number. So let's go ahead and generate a report here, and you'll kind of get to see what we're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and generate just this default report so you can see how that layout affects. So when I do that, and we're going to come back to what the various options are, but there is the header. There's your title in 16-point. There's your date in the 10-point on the right side. And when we scroll down to look at the footer, there's the page number centered within that footer. So you can go customize that header and that footer uh, within, that, within that report. And it's going to remember what settings you set for the, the header and the footer for this particular report. Okay, the other two buttons here, fonts and indexes, if 
If I click on fonts, it's just going to give me the option for what fonts I want to use within this report. And each report type will have its own set of, uh, ty of types of text for you to choose the text for. In the box chart, basically, you just have the text within the chart. And so that's, that's the, only, uh, the only type of text you can actually set your font for. But you can go change your font right there. Indexes. Not every report will have indexes, but if your particular report that you're choosing allows you to have an index at the end of the report, you can choose the indexes button. In that, you can choose name index or place index, or both. On the name index, you can choose whether you want to have a name index. In other words, do you want an index of all the people in that report? If you, you can either say, I don't want it, or you can say, I only want to have the person's name and then the page number they show up on. Or you can say, I want to have their name along with their birth year. Or you can say, I want to have their name along with their birth and death year. So you choose what format you want the text to be printed in that index. You choose how many columns you want for that index. And you can choose whether you want the surnames to be forced to uppercase and whether or not you want the index to be color coded. The place index, very similar. The two options, the three options there are don't print the place index. And this is going to be an index of all the places within your report. Or you can choose to have each place printed as it appears in your database, the city, county, state, country. Or you can ask it to reverse the place. That's the default. And what that does is that groups all of your places within your index geographically. So you'll have all the places within the same country grouped together, places within the same state grouped together, within the same county grouped together, and so on. And then finally, you have uh, the option, how many columns. And finally, you can choose what fonts you want to use for the name index or the place index. Okay? And as usual, you have the reset button so that if you totally mangle your indexes, you can go click reset, and it'll take them right back to the defaults. Okay, so that covers these, these buttons over here on the right. Let's talk a little bit about what we can do with a box chart. First thing we're going to have is, who's this starting person? A box chart is either going to be the ancestors, meaning the person's parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on, or their descendants, their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on, that direction. So you choose that starting person, and you can click Start Person to change to anybody you want. By default, it's going to be whoever was highlighted when you went into the report. You can choose what type of chart, ancestors or descendants, how many generations, what the box style is. The box style lets you pick pretty boxes. You know, you can actually go in and you can say no boxes. So if you want just a very plain vanilla uh, chart, box chart, you can choose no uh, border. Or you can choose a single line or a single frame or the indented corners. So you can get fairly fancy with these. You can choose whether or not you want that little shadow right there. You can turn that on or off. Okay. You can also select the colors, the line color, the fill color for the box, the fill color number two. Um, some, some of these uh, have two different colors. And then what color you want the shadow to be. So pick the box the way you want it to look. You can also choose what format you want the text within, this, within each box. Do you want each name and event on a separate line, that's a default. Or do you want a single line with just the birth and death date, that's going to give you John Doe, and in parentheses, the birth and death date. Or you can choose all of those events word wrapped. In other words, it's not going to put the birth, the christening, the death, the burial, the whatever, on separate lines. It will word wrap them to make the report take up less room. Currently, these are the fact types that you can choose to include in your box chart. So we're just going to go ahead and leave those. You can also choose things like, do you want to include photos? Do you want to include the spouses if you're doing uh, the descendants? Do you want duplicate lines to only print once? What that means is if, you're, if you have a bunch of cousin marriages where your lines start to repeat, if you don't want those to repeat over and over, you can choose that. Do you want private facts? If you have facts that you've entered that you've marked as private, if you've got marked somebody's birth as private, maybe you don't want that to print, so you can choose that. And finally, do you want color coding to print? If you don't print color coding, 
Roots Magic is going to use whatever color you chose for the box up here in the box style. If you choose color coding, it's going to choose uh, the color that you picked for each line. Let's go ahead and generate this report. I'm going to size it to fit here. So you'll see we have the box, the person's pictures, if they have a picture. It's printing the birth, marriage, death, burial information all on separate lines. And as I go down, you'll see that that box chart is going to continue. Okay, Howard Smith was not color coded. That's why he's using that default yellow color that we selected. Okay, there's another line, and so on. And since we told it we wanted the index, there's our index of names, including the color coding. As we go on down, there's our index of places. So as I mentioned, all of our New Yorks are grouped together, and within each county, uh, those are grouped together as well. Okay, so I can also come in here to settings, and I can go change settings. If I decided, oh, I don't want that color coding after all, just turn it off, regenerate the report, and there's my same report with the color coding turned off. I can also say, oh, this is taking more room than I'd like. Let's go ahead and word wrap these facts. So I can go back into the settings, and I can come right here and choose the names and events word wrapped, generate it. Okay, and there you can see what it's going to do is it's going to put their name, their birth, death, burial, that information. It's going to word wrap it so that it takes up less room uh, and, and is going to use less pages for that same report. The layout's the same but it just takes less room uh, word wrapping those. Now, when we're in the reports, uh, in the print preview, we do have some options. Obviously, if we're happy with this and just want to print it, click print, and it's going to print that report. I can click save and save that report in a number of different formats. The formats that are available are going to be different depending on what type of report it is. Some reports will have um, other extra options depending on whether it's actually possible to save those in that format. You also can click on email and choose a format, and Roots Magic will let you email this report directly. It will automatically open up your email program, create this report in whatever format you selected, and attach it to the email uh, so that you can just type in the email address, write a note, and send it. You can zoom in and out. Okay, so you can see more or less detail as you're going in the, in the reports. Uh, you can also choose to fit it on the full page. That just basically brings the one full page there. Or page width, it's going to make the report fill uh, the width of that. And then finally close, that closes out your print preview. Okay, so we spent quite a bit of time on box charts. Obviously, we don't aren't going to be able to spend that much time on each report but we shouldn't need to because those buttons over there on the right, we don't need to recover those. Let's move on to pedigree chart. When I select pedigree chart, the pedigree chart is going to be an ancestor chart that's going to be similar to the box chart of ancestors, uh, except that it is going to fit a specific number of generations on each page. Once again, I can pick who the starting person is, how many generations I want to fit on each page. And you can do four, or five, or six generations on one page. Um, you can also choose some, some information. What's the chart number of the first chart? Uh, the, the, this information, start, num, start person is the same as one on chart number one. Most of the time, you will not need to adjust these. Uh, you have an option here called cascading charts. By default, if I leave that unchecked, Roots Magic is going to print one page. It's going to print one page with five generations. Let's go ahead and show that. Okay, there is my one page with the five generations. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I have one page along with my index. If I go into settings and choose to print cascading charts, again, by default you shouldn't need to change these. But what cascading charts does is takes the people in that last generation and creates a new pedigree chart for each of them. So when I generate the report again, you'll see I now have chart number one. Person number one on this chart is the same as person number one on chart number one. That's pretty makes makes sense. But as I scroll down here, well, actually, let me back up here. I'm going to start with Dr. James Smith. Uh, because I need somebody that has more generations than that. 
I'm going to do pedigree chart, and I'm going to do the cascading charts. When I do that, okay, you'll see right over here on the right, this person is continued on chart two, this person is continued on chart three, chart four, and so on. And as I go down, there's the continuation charts. This is that person that was on chart one, and you'll see his chart will say number one on this chart is the same as number 16 on chart number one. Okay, if I go on down, this person is the same as person number 17 on chart number one. So that's what a cascading pedigree chart is. Okay. Um, the only time you'll ever need to really change these numbers is if you're wanting to print a part of a cascading chart. In other words, you printed a cascading chart and maybe one of those pages has changed and you want to just update that one page without updating the other 50 pages of that pedigree chart. That's when you can use these numbers to adjust that. Also, finally, we have the ability, do we want to include color coding? Do we want to include private facts? And do we want to print the preparer? What that is, printing the preparer basically just gives us this prepared by information. Okay, so let's go on to the next chart. Photo tree. This is kind of the, the ultimate uh, fluff chart. And what this is, is I can go in and I can choose, again, the box style and choose a title and whether I want to include the siblings. But what this one does is this chart gives me the tree, the little with the leaves and so on, with the pictures. It's basically a photo tree. Uh, so it's just kind of to create a cute little, uh, a cute little tree. You can kind of see the overview right here. Um, if you don't have a picture for the person, it does just leave an, an, an empty space for that person. So this chart works best when you have pictures for the entire, uh, the entire three generations there. Okay, hop out. The relationship chart. Okay, this is actually one of my favorite charts in the whole program. What the relationship chart does is allows me to pick any two people in my file, and Roots Magic will draw a chart to show me how they're related. Now, not only does that actually show me how they're related, uh, you know, what, what lines they come down, but it also uh, shows me what a first cousin, second cousin, once removed, what that means. So let's go ahead and pick. I'm going to pick the two people that I want to show how they're related. So Roots Magic is going to default that first person to whoever was highlighted, and I'll just go ahead and use him. And for this second person, I click that, and I can just pick whoever I want. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, Beverly Ann Jones. So I am going to see what the relationship between these two people is. Okay, And I can choose what other information. Do I want their birth and death years to show? Do I want the marriage date to show? Do I want private facts and that box style? And I'll show you what those mean. Let's go ahead and generate that report. Okay, There's Dr. James Smith. And there is Beverly Ann Jones. So this is showing how they're related. So what it's doing is it's going and saying, these are the common ancestors. And by asking to show the birth and death years, that's where you're going to get these. If you don't ask for those, it's just going to print the, the husband and the wife's name. If you want that marriage information, it will print that. If you don't ask for that, uh, it won't print that. So this can be made more compact by not including those. But that's the common ancestors. And there were two children, Thomas K. Jones and Samuel K. Jones. Thomas K. married Myra Griffiths. Samuel K. married Ann Howells. Those two are siblings. Okay? They had a child, Floridell Jones, who married Howard Smith. They had Samuel David Jones, who married Al Mary Alice Davidson. Those two people are first cousins. Then they had a child, one, which happens to be the Dr. Jane Smith we're interested in. And they had John Paul Jones, who married Sally Lillian Burt. And those are second cousins. They had a child, who happens to be the other person we're interested in. And that's where we start getting removed. So from that common ancestor, there were children that were siblings. Their children are first cousins. Their children are second cousins. And the child of a second cousin is once removed from the other second cousin. So this chart is really nice to be able to print out to not only show uh, the common lineage between the two, but also to show you what first cousins, second cousins, and second cousins once removed actually means. Okay, so let's go ahead 
and move on to forms. Now under forms, we have a calendar. Let's go ahead and generate a calendar. When we generate a calendar, and you'll notice all of these so far have had basically some subset of the buttons that we talked about before over here on the right. That's why I haven't talked about those. Now when it comes to calendars, I can print a, a calendar for an individual month or for all the months within a particular year. So I can choose a particular month and year, or I can choose all months for that year. I can enter a title that I want for the calendar, and I can choose which people I want to include. So by default, it uses everybody except filtered based on, on this information right here. Now, I can also say select from a list, and if I do that, Roots Magic brings up a list of everybody in my database, and I can either go and just individually select the people I want to include in that calendar, or I can say mark a group of people and mark the family of the highlighted person, or everyone in this person's tree, or the ancestors, or the descendants. Or I can say select people by data fields. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. We've covered this in a couple of the previous webinars, like the custom reports. But what that would let me do is go in and say everybody uh, whose birth date uh, is, is after this and whose birthplace contains California, I can, I can kind of enter whatever information I want for selecting that group of people. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use everyone. Now, I have a check mark right here to only include living people, so I don't have to go up here to the, the filter, filter for living people. That's one of the options that's already built in. I can also choose whether you to use the married name for females. So in other words, when it prints a female's birthday, instead of printing uh, her maiden name, it will print her married name, uh, so, which she's most more likely to be known as. Uh, I can also, you can also choose whether or not you want to include the person's age at that birth date. Now, on the married name, one question we often get is, what if a, what if a woman was married more than once? It's going to use the last, uh, the last married name. And so it, it looks at whatever the last the last marriage was, and it will use that last marriage name. Okay, I can also choose what to include. Do I want to include birthdays and anniversaries? Okay, if there was a divorce, do I want to include that anniversary? And by default, no, most, most of the time you don't, so you don't want to include divorce marriages. And then finally, do you want to print private facts? So let's go ahead and generate the report. And what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a calendar right here. And this calendar, unfortunately, is going to have probably very few uh, people on it because this particular database uh, is, mostly, is mostly older information, not a lot of living information, uh, even though this is kind of a fake database. But this is what you would get. You would get the person's name on their birth date along with their age. If there's an anniversary, that anniversary will show the couple's name, and it will show the anniversary year as well. Okay, and it looks like I don't have, I don't have an actual anniversary, uh, a marriage that is recent enough to, to be shown in here. Uh, but you would have that. Now, by default, again, this is printing in portrait. Now, a lot of times when you see a calendar, calendars generally tend to be in landscape. So you could come over here to the layout and choose landscape mode so that it goes sideways and generate that, and your calendars are going to be laid out more like you normally see calendars. So that's an option that's there as well. Right here where it says calendar, that's where it's going to print the title uh, if you wanted to. So I could come up here to settings and put um, my family calendar and generate that. And it, it's actually going to show you my family calendar right there. So you can give that a title as well. Okay, let's move ahead to the family group sheet. Now, the family group sheet is, along with the pedigree chart, tends to be one of the two most commonly used uh, reports in, in genealogy and family history. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create that. You're going to have a lot, uh, a lot of options here. Um, one is which family. By default, it's going to print just a family group sheet for that current family. But you can go and actually say select from a list. It'll bring up a list of all the families in the database. And you can choose a group of families to print family group sheets for. Uh, I don't advise trying to print all the family group sheets in the family all at once. It can really, really slow things down. And it can take a long time to actually generate uh, that. 
Okay, some of the options you have uh, for, for printing a family group sheet. Let's go ahead and print a default family group sheet here so that you can kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. Okay, here is a basic, well, actually, let me go print, let me go select a family that actually has some children in it and do the family group sheet for that family. Okay, so a family group sheet, you're going to have the father and the mother, and then you're going to have a list of the children, and then that's going to continue on down. And then you have the option to print the notes for each family member if you want. You have the ability to print the sources for each piece of information within the family group sheet. You also have the option to print an index of the names, and you also have an option to print an index of the places. Okay, so that's kind of an overview. So let's hop back into the settings. Okay, one of the things that you can do is you can include photos. So let's go ahead and choose to include the photos for each person. So all I have to do is check that checkbox, generate that report, and we now have the photos for each person. If we have a photo, if we don't have a photo, obviously that photo is not going to, uh, not going to print because it's not there. Okay, so that's an option. There's also an option to print a family photo at the top of the page. Now, I don't happen to have a family photo entered, but what that would do is right here at the top, it would print the family photo, and this part, the father and mother, would all shift down, so I would have a nice big family photo up at the top of that, uh, up at the top of that chart. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, look at some of the other options. Other spouses of parents. Okay, what that means is if the father or mother had other spouses, if they had been married before, those other spouses would be listed right here. It would say other spouse, other spouse, and would list the other spouses for the father and mother. There's also, do you want to show the spouses of each child? If you choose that, the spouses for each child will print in those child. Okay, basic events even if blank. What that means is that if, by basic events, the program basically means birth, death, and burial. So you'll see right here, there is a burial row for this child, for Charles Smith, even though I don't have burial information. So that's what's nice to be able to uh, print up one that you might want to use as a worksheet to be able to fill that in if you find it. If I don't check that checkbox, then this burial row is not going to show up. Roots Magic will only print rows for the pieces of information that actually exist. Okay, um, the family photo at the top of each page, I do see a question, where do you input a family photo? On the person's edit screen, when you highlight, uh, you'll, you'll have several rows. You'll have their name row, and then you'll have rows for their spouses and rows for their parents. Highlight that row, and you'll just go in and say, I want to add photos right there. And that's where you can enter a family photo for that person and that spouse or for that set of parents. That's where you can enter those photos. Okay, photos for each person, we showed you that. Print color coding. What that's doing is choosing whether or not that person's name is color coded. If you use color coding uh, to color code that person, that will print if you choose that option. Uh, for those who want to know how to color code, that's under the tools menu. There's an option called color coding. That was covered in... The, the getting started uh, webinar, which we did, uh, one of the very first webinars that we did. And so you can look that up. Again, do you want to include private facts? Do you want to print notes? Now, you, you can choose to print notes. And what that's going to do is at the end of the family group sheet, it's going to print the notes right here. After the family group sheet it wraps up, right here, it's going to print the notes. It's, it's going to tell you which person it's for and which event those notes are going to be for. Now there's also an option you'll see, do you want to print child notes? Because you might want to print notes, but you might not want to print child notes because if you're going to print a family group sheet for that child, that child's notes are going to print on the group sheet where he's a parent, and you may not want those duplicated. Uh, so that's an option that, where you can turn the child notes on and off. Also, do you want the notes to start on a new page? You'll notice on this one, we had the family group sheet and it ended a ways up there, and then the notes started below. But if I go in and say, no, I don't want those notes to start on a new page and regenerate that, now I'm going to have the family group sheet, 
and those notes are going to begin immediately at the bottom of that family group sheet. It's not going to skip to a new page for that. So there's an option that you have available. Also, if you've entered private notes, private notes are notes that you put these little uh, squiggly braces around. And you can use those anywhere within the notes. And if you print, if you put those little braces around some part of your notes for a person, if you uncheck this, Roots Magic will not print any note that has those braces around it. So that will be treated privately. It will be in your database, but it won't print in the family group sheet. Okay, finally, print the MREN. Those people who are coming from PAF, a lot of times they're interested in having that marriage record number uh, in there. That's that number that the program automatically assigns. If you check that and generate that, your family group sheet will have that it was called an MREN in there. So that's an option if you want that available. Finally, do you want the prepare and the comments? And what that's going to do is if I put this is a comment about the family group sheet, and if I do that and generate that report, down here at the bottom of the family group sheet, you're going to see an area called Prepare and Comments, and there it is. This is a comment about the family group sheet. That gives you a place to put some text that's going to print on the group sheet, so when you print it out, it goes to somebody. As for the Prepare, let me go in and show you how you enter that Prepare, because a lot of these reports have an option to include the Prepare. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and I'm going to go into, under Tools, on the main menu, and I'm going to come down to the File Options. Okay, the preparer can be different for each file. I'm going to go into the file options, and in the categories there, there's a category here called preparer. So I can put um, Bruce Busby, and I can put an address. And then I can put an, a phone number. And I can put a cell phone and all kinds of stuff, email addresses. So I can go in and, and put that. Now, now once I've done that uh, prepare information, it's available for any of these reports. So when I go into the forums and the family group sheet and create it, and I tell it to print the prepare and the comments, when I generate this, now when I go down here, there you'll see there's that prepare information that I included. And if I, had want, if I had entered some comments, it would enter those comments in there as well. So I only have to enter the preparer information the one time, and it's available on most of these reports just by checking a little checkbox. Okay, so that's an overview of the family group sheet. There is one new button over here, though, that you'll notice. All these other buttons we've talked about, except there's now one called Sources. If I click on that Sources button, this is going, this means Whenever I see that Sources button, it means this particular report can print sources. And so I can choose, do I want sources? Maybe I don't want the sources to print. I can just say, no endnote or footnote citation, and my sources are not going to print. Okay? Or I can say I want endnotes printed at the end of the document, or I want the footnotes printed at the bottom of each page. Okay? I also have some other options here. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these particular options. Just know they're here. Uh, because there, there is a webinar we did previously on working with sources, and we cover all of this in that webinar. Uh, but you can choose to do endnotes, footnotes. You can choose whether you want a bibliography, and of course you have options to hide the private data that's within those endnotes and what fonts you want to use there. And as always, you've got your reset button in case you mangle, mangle your settings. Okay, so that's your family group sheet. Let's go ahead and move on to the individual summary. The individual summary is going to be the report that kind of prints almost everything you know about that particular person. Okay, um, When you print the individual summary, it will include the person's photographs if you want that. It will include their names, their, their facts. It will include their parents, their spouses, their children, their current address, any to-do items their individual facts, what age they are with those facts, and the notes. Um, and again, you have the ability to print the private notes. Okay, I see a couple of questions. What does this strip, the little squiggly brackets, means? What that means is if I uncheck this, 
anything that's in the little squiggly brackets is not going to print. In other words, it's not going to print those private notes. But if I decide I want to print the private notes, Roots Magic by default will print those little squiggly brackets as well. Now, if you're trying to keep something private, and in this case you don't mind it being shown, those squiggly brackets are going to really bring attention to the fact that, you know, why are those squiggly brackets there? And so you can choose this option that if you're going to print those private notes, you can say strip those brackets off so that what the notes as they print don't have those squiggly brackets around it so it doesn't bring attention to the fact uh, that, those, that those notes happen to, be, uh, happen to be private. So let's go ahead and generate an individual summary. Again, it can also have your sources. Let's go ahead and generate an individual summary uh, with everything selected for this person. I just tell it to generate the report. And here's our report. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to print the person's picture, their name, their sex, their parents. It's going to list all of their individual facts along with the dates, their age, uh, the places, and as you can see, it's got the sources. And you'll notice that the little point, the little cursor, when I move over the sources, turns to a pointy finger. That's because those sources are hot linked. If I clicked on one of those little reference numbers, it's going to jump down to the sources at the end. Okay, after the individual facts, it's going to go on into the marriages. It's going to list all of the marriages along with the marriage facts, all of the children for each marriage. Then it's going to print any notes. And in this case, it's going to print the preparer because I had that checked. Then it's going to go in and print the end note sources. And, 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 and basically, there's, that's what I'm going to do. Now, again, I'm going to, go, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select a different person. I'm going to pick somebody with a little bit more information here. And I'm going to do that individual summary for them with all the options. Okay, and there is the current address, there's all their individual facts, there's their marriages, their multiple marriages of children, there's their notes, there's their to-do items. So you can see the more you have, more information you have, the more is going to print in this individual summary. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to scrapbooks. Scrapbook is pretty basic. Scrapbook is going to print the pictures for a particular person. Okay, let's go ahead and generate that, uh, create this. Every person, family, source, and place can have its own scrapbook or its own multimedia album. And I'm just going to go ahead and do, pick this person. And when I select a person or a family or a source, down here I can choose which person or which family or which source, so on, I want to print the pictures for. I can choose the layout. How many columns and rows of pictures do I want? What box style, if I even want boxes around each picture? I can choose whether to print the captions. Each picture can have a caption. In other words, a one-liner that says what this picture is. Each picture can also have a description where you can enter a paragraph or two about that picture. You can choose whether you want that to be included. If you're printing a scrapbook for a person, you can also choose whether you want to include the photos that are attached to that person's events. Okay, in other words, you can not only attach pictures to a person, but you can attach like a baby picture to the person's birth event if you want. If you do that, you can choose whether you want to include that. So let's go ahead and generate this. And here we go. Uh, here's my scrapbook. I picked two, page, two columns by three rows, so you can see the overview. That would have given me up to six pictures for this person if I wanted. If I want the picture smaller, uh, I could pick three columns by three rows or whatever. If I wanted to put one picture on each page, if I want a really nice resolution, I can put uh, one column by one row, and it's going to give me one picture. And so there's the picture, there's the caption. Uh, if I had a description, it would write that description underneath there as well. Okay, so that's the, that's the scrapbook. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to labels. I'm seeing some questions being asked. I'll come back to some of these uh, as, as we have time uh, because we've got a lot, of, a lot of reports to do here. Um, address labels, those are pretty straightforward. I can choose what I want to print labels for. All addresses, addresses listed linked to people, to families, or selected. Selected people addresses is really useful. If I click that, I can choose the group of people. The best, feet, the best way to use this is for things like a family reunion. I can go select that ancestor who is over this family reunion. So in other words, if these are the, this reunion is the descendants of John Doe, I go to John Doe and I say mark his descendants. 
That way only his descendants are included when I print addresses. So all I get are just the, just the addresses of those particular descendants of that person. I then choose what type of labels, and they're built on the standard Avery, uh, Avery label types. So I go ahead and pick that, and I generate the report, and there we go. It's going to do that. When I print, RootsMagic knows what margins, left margins and gutters and all of that stuff. When I print this, these will print just perfectly on, on that particular label style. So I partic pick one uh, of these where it happens to be uh, two wide, in other words, two labels wide and seven labels tall. Okay, it's going to position them that way. One thing that's really nice, first label to print, this is where if you're using a sheet of labels where you've already printed a bunch, and so you've got like a half a sheet of labels, you can choose which row and column is that first label to print, so you don't have to worry about printing three labels and then the rest of the sheet is, is useless because it's going to try to print on those, those little spots where the labels don't exist anymore. So that's where you can actually choose that first label to print to reuse sheets of labels that have already had labels printed. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to come back to lists because that's, like I say, that's the longest one. Narratives, I'm going to very briefly touch this. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, if you want to see this type of, these narratives in more detail, go check out the webinar on publishing uh, a family history using Roots Magic. Uh, the narrative lets me do two different report types, ancestors and or descendants. In other words, that starting person who I can select and all of his parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on, or his descendants, his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on. Now, the ancestors does have another option, ancestors and children. Um, let's go ahead and generate one of those. So it's going to start with Dr. Jane Smith. It's going to do his parents, grandparents, and so on. Now, these are all the same as we've used before, these buttons over here on the right. But I do have some additional options just for narrative reports. I can choose for each generation to start on a new page. Uh, and like I say, these we talk about all of these in that, in that previous uh, webinar. So uh, this is where you can choose whether or not to print notes or color coding, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and generate that ancestor narrative. And here we go. It's going to start the first generation, and there he is, and it's going to include his picture. And it's writing the sentences. It's embedding the notes, weaving the notes for the facts in there. It's putting my sources in. It then goes on to the second generation, to his father and his mother. There's my sources. I told it I wanted them as footnotes. It's also listing the children of his ancestors. So it's getting not only him, but it's getting all of his brothers and sisters moves on to the third generation, there's the color coding you're seeing coming into effect. Their children, so you're getting the children of the various ancestors, so you're getting all the aunts and uncles and so on. And that continues on down for however many generations you tell it to do it. There's your bibliography in addition to your sources, and there's your index of your names of your people, and there's your index of places. Okay, so that's going to be your narrative reports. Okay. Under reports, we, again, we talked about custom reports a couple of weeks ago in our uh, webinar specifically on custom reports. Blank reports, that's going to let us print blank pedigree charts, blank family group sheets, and you can choose how many children slots you want on that family group sheet. Those are great when you just want to print a blank chart to send to a family member and say, hey, can you fill this family group sheet out for your family? Or can you fill this pedigree chart out for this particular line that you know about? Okay, there's also a few just generic uh, reports, a research log, correspondence log, or a cemetery record form. Those help you with research. Those print, if I, if I print out a blank research log, say generate it, okay, there it is. It's basically a blank research log uh, that I can print out and fill in information, uh, you know, so I can take it with me when I go to the library or things like that. So that, that's basically what those are, just blank reports. Again, we're going to have another future webinar on the wall charts, so I'm not going to spend really any time on them. Okay, finally, let's jump into the list. Okay, uh, we're going to try to probably go through these fairly quickly, uh, just kind of give you an overview of what you can do. Again, like I said, 
Go ahead and play with the settings. If you mess up the settings, don't worry about it because you can always reset them. Okay, address list. Before we had the address labels, the address list lets me choose uh, which addresses I want. They're the same choices as when I print the labels. How many columns I want the address list. Uh, and then I can choose. Do I want to include the phone number is email, fax, the website? Uh, do I want to print notes? Addresses can have notes. And do I want the prepare? Let's go ahead and just generate that so you can kind of get an idea. Okay, I get the two columns. And in this case, I had everything checked. So it's printing the person's name, their address, their phone, their fax, their email, their website, and then any notes uh, for, that particular, uh, for that particular address. So that's, that's going to give you a list of whichever addresses you selected. Okay, on and toffle. On and toffle, it's a German word that means ancestor table. And the on and toffle is kind of like the ancestor narrative where it's going to take a person and include that person and his parents and grandparents and so on. The on and toffle number is that number you've probably seen where the starting person is one, his parents are two and three, the grandparents are four, five, six, and seven. Basically, the on and toffle number, you can, if you take any person, his father will have a number double his. So person number 100, his father is number 200. And his mom is plus one, 201. And you can do the same thing going backwards. If you find a person, person number 200, you know that his child in that on and toffle is number 100. So you can choose how many, the starting person, how many generations. And again, do you want color coding? Do you want to include private facts for the preparer? And this report is going to look basically like this. Like I say, it's kind of like the narrative, except it's only going to print basically some bare information for that person. It's going to print that person's name and then their birth, marriage, and death information, date and place. So it's like an ancestor book or ancestor narrative, just must much more compact. So you can go through there and you can see there's the on and toffle, and again it can have the indexes as well. Okay, let's go to the birthday and anniversary list. This is going to give you a list of the birthdays within the database. Kind of like the calendar, except it's a list, so it's a lot more compact. So you can do the same type of things. Which people do you want to include? Everyone, or do you want to select only certain people? Do you want to only include living people? And again, do you want to include birthdays? Do you want to include anniversaries? And if you're doing anniversaries, do you want to include any divorced marriages? So let's go ahead and generate that. And that's basically those are those same two people that we had in the calendar. Like I mentioned, this particular database does not have a lot of uh, living people in it. And so this is going to give you the birth date. It's going to be sorted by the date from January 1st to December 31st. And it's going to include the, what, who, what person it is, what they're, what, how old they're going to be on this, on, on this year's birth date. Um, and then on the anniversary, it's going to show you what anniversary it is for that couple. So just a more abbreviated version of the calendar. Correspondence list. Let me hop out of here real fast. Under the lists menu, we have a thing called a correspondence list. And what that lets you do is keep track of correspondence that you've had with people. You can put a description of that correspondence, assign it your own personal file number. You can choose whether this correspondence was mail, email, telephone, fax, or other whether it, this was correspondence that you sent or received, the date, any details about that, and who you corresponded with. You'll notice there's two buttons, select repository and select address. So if you select rep repository, that's going to let you select from the, that, those same places that sources um, are, are kept. You know, so that's going to be courthouses, national archives, family history library, and so on. Address is going to let you choose from the addresses of people. Uh, that are within your database. So if you write a letter to Aunt Martha, uh, it's going to let you select that. So you can choose either case and it's going to show you that right there. You can also actually add a name of a file. You can browse and select a file so that if you actually wrote a letter to somebody using Word or WordPerfect or whatever, you can actually put that file right in here so that right from this correspondence log you can click open and it will open up that program with that letter uh, showing right there. So anyway, so that's the correspondence list. So in the reports, when I go into the reports, 
and go to the list and go to the correspondence list, this is printing the correspondence that I've entered in that correspondence list. And I can choose what type of correspondence I want to print, whether I want to include correspondence that was sent or received, do I want to include the address of the preparer, and I can just generate the report. And there we go. Here's the correspondence that I've had, including when, what type of correspondence, who it was to, any notes. And if I have a file, it's actually going to show me the, the actual path name of the file. Uh, so that's printing, uh, printing uh, the correspondence list. Descendant list. Let me go ahead and pick somebody that actually has descendants. And I could also have done that by clicking the little button right there. Sometimes for me it's just easier to go out there and pick them off that pedigree. This is going to look very much like that box chart options. Um, the descendant list is going to be a person and their children, grandchildren, and so on. I can choose how many generations, how many spaces to indent each generation, and whether or not I want to include lead dots before the person's name. Do I want to include their spouses? Let's just go ahead and generate that. This is a descendant list. So it takes that first person. Spouses have a plus in front of their name. And the reason we actually do that is because um, Roots Magic does not assume necessarily that they are married, so we actually don't use SP, we actually use plus to show that because they may or may not have been married. That's generation one. Generation two is going to be that next generation, and you're going to see them label, and then their children, their children, and so on. And these are those little leader dots. So when I went back into that settings, if I want those leader dots, if I don't want those, turn it off, and I don't have those leader dots. Some people just like having them. Uh, do I want to include the spouses and the, pet and, uh, the color coding and so on? Okay, so that's the descendant list. One thing that's nice about the descendant list is when I go to save that, I can save that in just plain old text formats and some other options beyond what I can normally do when I print a box chart that actually draws lines. Duplicate list, that's self-explanatory. There's a bunch of options. Obviously, we don't have time to just take a look at them. Play with the different options. If you mess up, click on reset, and it'll set them back. But I can find anybody that is matching based on this information. Do their names have to be spelled the same or sound alike? Do I want to compare people that don't have a surname? How do, I, how do their births and their death information need to compare? Um, how far apart do their birth dates have to be? If they're within two years uh, and their names match, do I want to consider them a, a duplicates? I can also find people that have the same ancestral file number or the same reference number. Let's go ahead and generate that. And that's going to give me a list of my possible duplicates along with their record ID. It's going to show me their birth and death information so I can uh, use that to see. Now, you can also go in and do, the under the merge feature, you can do a duplicate search to get an interactive list. But if you want a printed list, this is where you can get that. Okay, let's go on. Fact list. Okay, fact list is a very, very powerful list, and it's actually a bunch of lists all built into one. So I can go in here and I can say, give me a list of everybody with this fact type. And every fact type, including ones you've created yourself, are included. So if I want to get a list of everybody that I have a census fact for, I just go ahead and do that. There's a list of everybody that I have a census fact for and the date and the place for that fact. Okay, I can also pick any other fact where I can say, give me a people that are missing this fact type. So if I want to get a list of everybody that I don't have a birth fact for, there they are. There's a list of the people that I don't have a birth fact for. Okay, I can also say people that have more than one of this fact type. Okay, maybe, maybe I want to see if there's anybody in my database that I have more than one birth fact for. Roots Magic does allow you to have conflicting information so I can actually have people with more than one birth fact. In this case, I don't, but this would give me a list of anybody that had more than one birth fact entered for them. Okay, now, I'm not limited to including only those. I can, again, go down here and filter it. So I can come down here and say, mark only the Smiths, which would allow me to do something like, say, show me only the Smiths that have more than one birth fact or that are missing this information. Okay, let's go on a little bit. Facts that have sources. Okay, This is going to give me a list of all of the facts in my database that I do have sources for. Okay, I can also say, give me a, everybody or all the facts 
that don't have sources, and obviously in this database that's going to be a big list. Okay, there's a big list of all the facts uh, sorted by person that I do not have a source for. Okay, I can also say facts with a citation quality of. Okay, if I do this and I say sources, facts with a citation quality where the source information and evidence are any, that's going to give me the same as every fact, every source that has, or every fact that has a source. But I can say I only want uh, uh, facts that have a citation quality that's original, and I don't care what the information or evidence are. Um, now, if you don't know what these are, source information or evidence, once again, go watch uh, the, the webinar, our webinar on sources, because we cover all of this in there as well. But that will give me a list of all the sources, uh, the, all the facts I have that have an original source, or that have a primary, primary information, or that the evidence is direct. You know, so I can, I can change, mix and match these to get all kinds of, of lists of, of my, my facts that have sources. Facts that have text dates, okay, that's going to give me a list of all, my, of all my facts that have a date that is not a date with a day, month, year type of thing where Roots Magic can actually figure out that it's a date. So if I have a date that in this case is infant or first Thursday after Easter, something where Roots Magic can't actually figure it out, uh, that's, that's what you're going to get there. And then finally, all my private facts. So if I want to go find all the private facts I have in my database, uh, I can get that as well. Okay, now if I do uh, choose print, create a list of private facts, make sure you check this. It really doesn't do you much good to print a list of your private facts and then tell it not to include private facts. That doesn't help you much at all. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. The individual list, this is going to give you a list of everybody or a selected group of people. Again, you go choose whichever people. Or there are other, this is like I say, this is one, again, one of those lists or reports. It's actually multiple lists built into one. I can get a list of everybody who has no parents entered in the database. That's going to give you those end of line people. Or people that have more than one set of parents in her, people that might have a set of biological parents. They might have a, a biological and adopted. They might just have two sets of parents which need to be cleaned up. Uh, also, people that are not linked to anybody else, anybody who's just floating around in there loose. And finally, you can choose what information to include. Do you want to include all their facts? Do you want to include their parents, their spouses, their children? Uh, do you want the color coding? If you uncheck all of this, you're just going to get a list of the people's names. But if you include all of that, you're going to get a list with a lot of information. There's all your information. You got your color coding along with all your facts as well. Okay, now we're going through this pretty quickly. Um, again, you can go back. We're, this, this webinar is going to be recorded. You can go back and watch this uh, and see all of this in detail. Kinship list. Kinship list only asks you for that starting person. Uh, and you can choose whatever starting person you want. And that, what this list is going to give you is a list of everybody in that file that's related to that person and how they are related. Okay, so you're going to see in-laws and cousins. It's like that relationship chart, except it's not limited to two people. It's going to show you how everybody in the file is related to that one particular person. Okay, LDS ordinance list. Okay, for those that are LDS, this is going to give you the ability to get a list of all all the individual ordinances, that's going to be your baptism endowment, uh, sealing to parents, that type of thing, or the sealings. That's going to give you all the families with marriage sealings. Again, you can choose which people you want to print. Everybody in the database, only those that are missing ordinances, only those that have all their ordinances already completed, only those that have ordinances that are marked as submitted, or only those that have ordinances that are qualified. Again, you can t tell it not to include living individuals, which you really don't actually need, so you can leave that unchecked because you're most likely not going to want that. And you can tell it whether to print the word qualified for ordinances that they are already qualified for. Again, do you want private or include that prepare? And that's going to give you a list similar to this. There's your list with the birth and death date, and it's going to tell you what they're qualified for. If the work is done, uh, you will see the dates in there as well. Okay, marriage list. Marriage list is going to give you a list of all the couples in your file. 
And you can choose to sort that by the husband's name, the wife's name, the marriage date, the marriage place, or the marriage record number. That's that MRIN number. So if you want to see it sorted by that MRIN, you can do that as well. Okay, you can choose to include couples with a marriage event or couples with no marriage event, or leave them both checked and you get them both. Okay, so if you want to find the couples that you don't have a marriage event for, you can check that one without checking, including the marriage event. Let's go ahead and generate that report. And here's your list. It's sorted by the husband name. Like I said, you can also sort that by the wife's name. You can sort that by the year they were married, or you can sort that by the place. So you can get this list sorted in any of those particular orders. If you want that marriage number right there, you can choose to print that, in which case you're going to get that record number listed right there. If you want to, you can also say sort by that marriage record number, and so that's going to give you that same list sorted by that marriage record number. Okay. Missing information list. Okay. There's a lot of times when you may want to know what information uh, you don't have. For, now, there was a report. If you remember, we looked at that fact list report, and there was an option. Print a list of everybody who's missing this particular fact. Well, this is like that particular report on steroids. So I can say everybody who's missing the birth, I can check the little birth, and I can get everybody who's missing that fact. Um, but the thing is, is I can also say I want everybody who's missing the birth or the death uh, or the burial. So I can choose all three of those. Now, in addition to choosing which fact types I want to include, again, I can choose which group of people. So I can, I can choose only a particular family line or only people born in a particular place or only people that have a certain last name, whatever. I can also choose I only want people that are missing that fact. In other words, if they have a death birth fact or a burial fact, but it happens to be blank, no date or place, it's not going to include them. It will only include them if they're missing that fact. So if you want to get everybody that's missing some information about birth, burial, or death, make sure they're all checked. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate that report. And you'll see Mary is missing birth, burial, and death information. She's missing all of them. Okay, Andrew, you'll see for burial, it's listing his burial date, but it's putting an underline for the burial place, which means I don't have his burial place. But you'll notice that birth and death aren't even listed there. That's because... I do have his birth and death information. So it, uh, since it's not missing, Roots Magic doesn't waste uh, those two lines of your report to include that. If you want to include that information, use the um, use the individual the individual list report, and you'll get it's where you can get all of that. But this is mainly to give you information that's missing. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to the multimedia list. The multimedia list is going to give you a list of all the uh, pieces of media, the pictures, the video, the sound clips, things like that, that you have linked to within your database. And you can choose which ones. Do you want to include media that a person is linked to, or family, or events, or sources, or place? If you only want to, a list of the pictures or media, that are linked to a person, you can uncheck those. But if you want all the media in the whole file, you can do this. Again, you've got the ability to filter based on, you know, last name, family line, or whatever. You can do that just like you can in a lot of these other reports. You can also choose what type of media. There's four types of media. There's photographs. That's what most of us add. There's also sound clips or video clips. And then there's also an option called documents, which is where you can attach Word or Excel files or PDFs or things that are not images or photographs uh, to a person's media album. Okay. Now, one of the things that's really nice about this report, let's go ahead and generate this. One of the things that's really nice about this report is not only does it give you the person or the whatever, uh, it gives you the file name where Roots Magic thinks that picture is. But if Roots Magic cannot find that picture, Roots Magic is going to put this, not found. <coughs> what that basically means is there are some times when you link to a picture uh, and then later move that picture or delete that picture, Roots Magic still thinks that picture is where you told it, but 
Roots Magic can't find it. That's that's you'll see that when you generate a report and the picture shows up in the print preview because Roots Magic's using the little thumbnail that's built into the database. And so the picture's there, but when you actually go to print it or save a PDF or anything like that, all of a sudden that picture's not showing there. Generally what that means is that picture has been moved or deleted. And so this report's really useful to help you find that because you can see where Roots Magic thinks that picture is. You can go in Windows and look in that folder to see if that picture's there. If it's not, you can go find that picture and add it to that folder. Uh, or you can use the, uh, there's a feature in, the, in every multimedia album under the Tools button to fix broken media links. Okay, so that's the multimedia list. Now, it will also show you the caption and the description. You know, you have those options. If there are uh, the captions and descriptions, you can, you can have that done as well. Okay, the place list. Okay, the place list is going to give you a list of the places within your database. So you can say, print all the places in my database or print all the events in a single place. Now, printing all the places in the database also has the option to print all the events that occurred in each place. Now, this can make a pretty long report if your database is very big because it's going to print every single place in your file and every event that happened in every one of those places. Okay, now, when you're doing this, this first option, I never uncheck this option. That's reverse the place names. What that means is instead of printing each place, Albuquerque, Bernalillo, New Mexico, United States, it prints the place United States, New Mexico, Bernalillo County, Albuquerque. It reverses it so that all the New Mexico places are grouped together and then all the Bernalillo County cities are grouped together. So it groups everything geographically, makes it a lot easier to work with. You can also choose whether or not you want to print place details. Place details are things like the hospital, the street address, things like that. When you're entering data, Roots Magic has two fields. It has a place field where you enter city, county, state, country, and it has place details where you enter the cemetery name, the hospital name, the street address, or whatever. So you can choose whether or not you want it to include place details found in each of those places. You can choose you want latitude, longitude, notes, do you want to print a list of the pictures that are that you may have attached to that place? So let's go ahead and generate it with everything. Here we go. Here you can see all the eight Arizonas are together, and all of the Apache County, the Maricopa counties, those are all grouped together. But you can see by reversing it's grouping places together. It's going to show you the event and then uh, that the person, the person that that belongs with. Okay, so there's your. There's your, there's your place list. If you choose that one option to only include a single place, it's only going to include the one little part. It's like a little subset of this where it's only the one part. Repository list. The repository is going to be the places where sources can be found or where to-do items are done. And so when you print the repositories, you can just say print those repositories or print, uh, print a single repository. And then you can choose whether to include the address, the notes for that repository. You can also choose whether to include the sources that are in that repository, the to-do items that are in that that have to be done at that repository, or correspondence that you've had with that repository. So if I generate that, there is my report. Okay, there's my repository, the address, the notes. Notes are great for things like hours. And here's my to-do items for that repository. Here's my correspondence with that repository. So I can go on down right here, and I can see all of that. I can get a list of an individual or all of my repositories. Okay, let's move ahead to, I'm, I'm going to skip research notes and come back to that one, because that one I'm going to be doing from a different database. Source list, again, watch the source webinar. It's going to cover all of this, but this will give you the ability to print all of your sources, sort it in different ways, or to print a single source, and you can choose Again, what information you want to print for each source, and that's going to give you a report that shows you each source you have, what the footnote for that source is, where that source can be found, there may be one or two repositories, and your citations, which people and which events are, are in that repository, or, or excuse me, are in that source, and what the details are for that as well. Okay, let's go to the statistics list. Statistics list, this you just pick who you want, everybody or a group of people. 
When I generate this, this is going to give me statistics about that group of people. How many people there were, how many broken down by male, female, or unknown sex. And so you'll have how many people you selected, how many of those people had a marriage event, what was the average minimum or maximum age at marriage, um, how many of those people had a death age. In other words, by death age it means they had a birth and a death date, so it can calculate an age. What was the average minimum and maximum age at death? Uh, same thing for individual uh, statistics for how many of them were married, and so the average marriages per person, the minimum, maximum, you know, you can see, you know, that person that was married 14 times, uh, the average children per family, the minimum and maximum children per family. So these are going to be your statistics, and like I say, you can do it on everybody or on just a group, the ancestors of this person. Okay, don't use that. Don't use that uh, to try to determine how old you're going to live to. You know, that's that. You you can pretend like that works, but you know that's not really going to uh, give you an accurate number there. Okay, surname statistics list. This you can sort on any of these columns. What the surname statistics list is is a list of all the surnames in your database. How many people have that uh, name? How many of those are male? How many are female? The earliest date that surname shows up in your database, and the most recent name or most recent date. So you can do things like the frequency of the surname. That's going to show you which surname is the most common, uh, down to the least common surnames in your database. Okay, the timeline chronology list. Okay, there's two different timeline chronology lists. Um, the individual. This is the one you'll probably usually do. This is going to give you a, con a list of all the events in a particular person's life. Whoever was highlighted, whoever was starting that, it's going to print all the events in their life. Group lets you choose just a group of people, random group of people, and it's going to print all the events. I'm going to show you why the individual one's the one you're usually going to want to do. When I generate that report, okay, you're going to see it's going to show he was born at age zero, then he was married at age 28, and then he died and was buried. That's just his information. But I can go back into those settings, and I can select other people to include in his timeline. So I'm going to say select, and I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick him, let's see, where is he, Dr. Jane Smith, and I'm going to choose to mark his family. And I can say I want to choose the family where he's a parent, also where he's a parent, and where he's a child. In other words, all of his immediate relatives, his parents, his siblings, and so on. So I mark all of them, click OK, those are now selected. Now I generate the report, and now I'm going to have information about his spouse being born, his children being born, and so on. Okay, this particular person doesn't have a lot of good information there. But this is going to give you a timeline of not only his events, but the events of his other family members that happened within his lifespan. So things that happened before he was born or after he died with those relatives, those pieces of information aren't going to be printed. It's only going to include uh, the events that happened within his life. So it's going to show the births of his children, uh, his marriage. If his parents passed away before he did, it's going to show that as well. Okay, the to-do list, that's going to give you the ability to print to-do items. If you've gone into the to-do list, um, you can actually print every to-do task in the database. Let's go ahead and do that. There's every to-do item in the database. But what's really nice is I can also do things like say, I only want to print the to-do items that I've added that need to be done at a single repository. I can choose which repository. So let's go ahead and pick Bernalillo County Courthouse. I'm going to go ahead and generate this. Now I have a list only of the to-do items that need to be done at a particular location. So if I am going to a library or I'm going to the archives or I'm going to whatever, I can print a to-do list of only the items that need to be done there. Now I can narrow that down. Maybe I don't have a lot of time there. I can say only print the to-do uh, the tasks that have a priority of at least four. Okay. If I do that, it's only going to give me uh, the priority that I'm actually looking for. I can also choose whether or not to only include open to-do items, completed, pending, or problem ones. Uh, and I can choose to have it print that full repository address. Now, I can also choose how I want those to-do items to be sorted. So I can generate a report that basically uh, is customized in the way I want. Okay, 
Let's back out of here. I'm going to switch to another database for that research, um, for that research uh, report list. What the research or the research notes list does is this is a fairly new report, but what this does is as you're adding sources, when you put not only the sources, you know, the, 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 bibliog the bibliography, the, the footnote, endnote, the citation information, Roots Magic also has the ability to allow you to add text or comments about that source or about that citation. If you've been using those citation or those detail notes and detail uh, comments, Roots Magic will let you print all of the research notes for a person or for a family. You select whether you're doing a person or family, and then you'll come down here and select which person or which family, and you generate the report. What Roots Magic is going to do in this report is it's going to select each event in your file that has a source, and it's going to print the text, the detailed text, and the detailed comments for that to give you basically your research notes for this particular this particular event. So you'll have you'll have the the, the event, the date that event happened, uh, the place. You're also going to have the your your actual text or or research notes for that for that citation. If there are any comments, and then you're going to have the actual footnote uh, or footnotes uh, for that report there as well. Again, that's one of those ones where you just go in and play with it. And again, if you mess up, you can click on Reset and start from there. Okay, one last report that's actually not in the reports, and that's under Tools, Problem Search. Actually, let me switch back to that other, back to our original database. This is the only report, really, that's not in that report dialog. If you generate, go to Tools and the Problem List and generate that problem list, you can choose which problems you want. This is covered in one of the previous webinars. Uh, I can go and I can generate the problem list, and I can click Print and generate that, and I can get that list of potential problems. Okay, like I say, this is this is generated from uh, the problem list because the problem list is actually uh, interactive, so that I can go in here and I can actually fix problems from right here. That's why that particular printout uh, is right there, rather than uh, rather than in the problem reports. Okay. That's an overview of the various uh, the various reports. I've seen a couple of a uh, couple of questions. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a couple of these that I've seen. One of them has to do with LDS information. Uh, if I want to show LDS information on reports, what I would do is I'll go up to Tools and then go down here to the File Options, and then there's an option right here, LDS Support. So if I turn on LDS support and click OK, then when I do reports, uh, like let's go to forms and do the family group sheet. When I do that and generate that, okay, I am now going to have the LDS information, if it's entered, is going to show right there, kind of like you, you normally expect it over here on the side. You're going to have your baptism, endowment, and so on. Uh, so that's the main thing. That's the main way to turn on LDS uh, facts to print in some of these various reports. There are a couple of exceptions, um, and, and to do that, what you'll do is over here under the Lists menu, you can come down here to the Fact Type list, and if you go down here and edit, uh, for example, LDS Baptism, you have an option right here to tell it whether or not to include that in narrative reports. So if you don't want LDS stuff to print in, uh, narrative reports, you can come in here and turn that off, uh, and so that's where you can turn that off. So, um, that's like I say, that's an overview. I know we went through this fast. This is being recorded, so you can go and download it and rewatch it uh, to see this discussion on each of these individual reports. And thank you very much for coming, and good luck with your reports.